forward to open this up. Oh yeah. All right, there we go. All right. Hey, so we finally got this together. <laughs> After how long? <laughs> I don't know. But thank you so That's much for uh for coming on with me today. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, and so finally all of the whatever aligned and we finally got this going. Uh -huh. I'm so excited to it talk to pleasure. you. I um I think that you are such an insightful brother and I've enjoyed our exchanges uh online for what the better part of a year, two years now. Um yeah. So yeah. I, I definitely, it's, it's my honor and my pleasure to have you on. So I want you to introduce yourself yeah. and where you hail yeah. from and give us some deets and then we'll launch into our conversation for today. Oh, okay. All right. So first, let me say, hey, it's a pleasure to be on. It's always a pleasure to, to mix it up with you. And it's even, I'm even more hyped now to actually be able to do this face-to-face-ish. All right. <laughs> right um, ish. <laughs> yeah. So um okay, so uh my name is Iskinder Bukhari. I a I am a I prefer to say I'm a vagabond and, and not in the a-hole kind of way. Um I moved around a lot when I was a kid, but both of my parents were in the military, and so I've never been in one place long enough to say, hey, this is my home. Uh the first home that I had was really just with my wife, and that's the person, not the place. Mm -hmm. um so i refer to Love myself that. as a vagabond yeah um black as you can see mm -hmm. <laughs> um i love my people uh I, I love to help out where i can and i try to be open-minded and continuously learning about the world about the world that uh we interact in not just from my point of view as a male or as a black man but um as a person who's a part of a group you know i have there are black women in our in my world you know other women other people children teenagers you now I, I try to be able to relate on every level that i realistically can can to whatever ex extent that i can uh so that i can be the type of person that i want to be in my mind mm -hmm. there is a a near perfect not a perfect but a near perfect version of myself that i want to be and that's what i aspire to be so that's what I, that's where I try to get to every day. And I try to be better today than I was yesterday. And I will say that one of the things that um, I've always appreciated about you and why I think that we had such a connection was um, you have a, a phenomenal way of being supportive that doesn't feel like um, pander psychology. And I know that the brothers always have an issue with you know, guys that are coming out in support of women and, and uh, women issues. And I have no idea why, but um, that's a conversation for another day. And I know it's not easy to step out in that space and advocate for women and women's issues as you see them. And be supportive because I know that a lot of brothers come at you, you know, like, you know, you are giving us a pass or not um, expecting for us to be accountable. And one thing that I will say is that over the years, I found you to be very fair when you, you know, you call it like you see it. And when you've seen some issues with women, you don't have a problem with calling that out um, and, or at least giving some context to, you know, why you can see both sides of the equation or the situation. And that I'm really appreciative of. I try to do the same. I think, you know, mm -hmm. there are clearly some situations in which we just are dead wrong. And we just need to acknowledge that and just, you know, because we ain't going to really be able to spin that no kind of way. And <laughs> it's not serving to us, right? I think that part right. of the issue that I always have when it comes to conversations between men and women is the one thing that I think is... Um, probably our greatest strength is also our greatest weakness which is we are the sum total of our experiences like we can't relate to what we ain't been through like everything yep. i read about certain things to me seem like a fairy tale like if i saw mm -hmm. sierra and russell which i think is wonderful to me that's like a fairy mm -hmm. tale because i've not experienced that i'm not hating on it i'm just saying that in my little corner of the world that ain't been my experience <laughs> uh -huh. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> you, you know, I would love to be able to get that kind of work one day, but that's just not my reality. But I think it's important to balance that with not slipping into a situation where it's like, oh, those kind of dudes don't exist or, you know, whatever. So I found it very interesting when you posted this meme, which I did talk about a little bit, but I wanted to bring you on to give your perspective. Um, which was men benefit from bad behavior. And, you know, it, it kind of made me uh, think about something that I'll always say, which is the TJ Maxx experience. And I'm not suggesting that only men do that because women do that as well. Let me make sure that I'm fair. You know, the TJ Maxx experience, for those of you all who have not heard my particular position on that is you get the max for the minimum. So you get the maximum, you know, return on a minimum investment. So you do just enough to get yourself positioned where, you know, somebody is going to go extra because maybe, you know, in their history, they've encountered a certain kind of dude or let's be fair, a certain kind of woman um, or, mm -hmm. you know, a certain kind of partner. And that person was just a Neanderthal in all their ways. <laughs> It just took them through all kinds of insanity. So, you know, you show up and, you know, you do something like, oh, I'm just hold the door open for you. <laughs> you holding doors around? <laughs> You're holding doors for women? Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> or, you know, you paying for the for the meal. Oh, you paying for mm. meals? I got me. What's that girl? <laughs> I forgot what her name is like. Oh, you got money. <laughs> you, got, you, you paying for meals out here? You're telling me the woman don't have to reach for her wallet? So, you know, there are some women that are like, I wish I would pay. Like, what you talking about? Yeah, uh huh. But, yeah. <laughs> but for some women, they get that kind of treatment and they really, it's a level up for them. So I wanted yeah. to, I talked about that a little bit, but I wanted to hear your perspective because I thought that you had some really salient points. And from a male perspective, um, some um, um, conversation that you were having with some brothers on your page that, you know, was kind of like, cause they were like, no, man, I don't. And I was like, yeah, he, he onto something. So I didn't. I, I obviously can't speak from a man's point of view. And I know that there are men out there already who are going to have issue with whatever it is that you say. I'm going to really ask that y'all just move around and not waste us with this video because it's that, yeah, this is probably not for you and you're going to be upset. And we don't want to upset you on this good Sunday afternoon. So just go ahead right. and move around. <laughs> <laughs> go somewhere else and listen um, to, and those that want to hear my good brother talk about it i'm gonna give you the floor all right so i already know i'm gonna piss somebody off but uh <laughs> it is what it is all right so first i'm gonna start off with why i shared it in the first place okay i didn't necessarily share it because i agree with it although i do agree with it when i read it scrolling you know how we always do scrolling when i read it it hurt. It hit me just, I'm like, oh, man, why, why you hit me like that? You know, it stung, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, it, and it really bothered me. It bothered me to, to an extent that I had to stop and think. It wasn't one of those things that I just scrolled by. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going scroll by. All right, this is just someone popping off at the mouth or anything like that. Mm -hmm. it, it actually hurt. Right. And it, it didn't hurt me personally, if that makes any sense. It hurt me because it felt like, oh, that is true. Okay. It's an uncomfortable truth. And it's it's something that I don't want to sit with. But I kind of have to sit with it if I want to, like I was saying before, if I want to be the type of person that I see in my head, I gotta be able to sit with this and be able to say, okay, so. This is a situation that I did not uh, realize existed, all right? Uh, what can I do about it now, all right? And let me uh, interject it, here for those of you all mm -hmm. who don't know because I can't share my screen right now, but this okay. was a, um, a, a meme that my brother posted, what, maybe a month ago now, if that, give it loosely. Yeah, um, about and three, it, four weeks ago. Okay, so it says all men benefit from the actions of violent men. It keeps women in check. It allows men to perform the barest minimum and still feel good about themselves. The existence of violent men grants good men, quote unquote, awards for basic decency. Yeah, and um, right. So um, after reading that, it, it, it's stunning. 
because it suggests that men, good, decent men, however, which way you, you, you personally define that, it suggests that we have a head start that we did not earn. Mm. And um, it sounds kind of familiar mm -hmm. when you're when you liken it to I don't know, this thing called white privilege, maybe, mm -hmm. um, where you are able to start off in a position in a race, if you will, that you didn't really earn to get there. So what do I, what do I mean by that? If I'm dating your, I hesitate to use the phrase or the term average woman, but mm -hmm. for the sake of conversation, I would say your average woman, your average sister, mm -hmm. um, who has been through a lot of bad relationships or various types of bad relationships. And she comes across me and there are things that I do that are just the bare minimum, normal, I think everyone should be treated like this type of actions. And she is off put, caught off guard, impressed mm -hmm. by something as simple as me holding the door, something as simple as me paying for a meal, something as simple as me walking on the left side of the, of the sidewalk, like, I, don't know, I just want you to stay over here, you know? I have done that. And I have been in situations to where which women were taken aback because I did these things that to me are just very, very simple things that I don't even think about. This mm -hmm. was the, one of the ways, one of the things that I learned from my dad that was definitely on the positive side, right? Um, and I have on more than one occasion have said directly to a sister that I was that I was dating or dealing with, what kind of situations did you find yourself in that you find that to be impressive? Wow. I'm like, it's not, it's not. And it's one of those things that it was just in the moment. It's not something that, that stuck to me. It's not something, I mean, well, it did because I remember it, but it's not something that consciously stuck to me. It was just, it was just, I, I'm behaving normally. This is normal. Let's keep it moving. All right. And they have always shown a level of, 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 of gratitude that I honestly did not think was reasonable uh, based off of the action that I that I performed. All right. Now, other things, I've done other things that could be considered going above and beyond. Okay, cool. But regular stuff is I have seen that happen before. I've experienced that happen before. So when I read that post. Uh, that mean. I sat and I, and I, I was just kind of stuck with it. And I was like, I'm going to share this because it stings. Mm -hmm. All right. It doesn't apply to me, but it applies to me also. Mm -hmm. All right. Because no matter how great of a person that I am, no matter how, how great of a person that I become, I'm always going to benefit from the norm in, uh, from a, a woman's perspective. Um, from performing above that norm, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? And I don't think that that's something that should be the case, but it is. And in order to move from what it is to what it can be, you have to be able to sit with what it is and be able to understand why this is the case, how it got here. Because understanding those two is what allows you to not allow that to happen again, not allow it to continue. So... When I, shared, when I shared it on my wall, I wanted to be able to have an open dialogue with a lot more brothers because there's a lot of brothers on my Facebook page mm -hmm. and only a few of them participated. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that they did. We did. We were able to have a decent dialogue um, concerning it. The impact that a lot of them got was, well, this doesn't concern me. You know, I, I do for my wife, I do for my woman, and, and I do it because I love her and so on and so forth. And I'm like, you're right, I hear you, I agree with you. No, it's not talking directly to you, but understand you do benefit from it in some kind of way. Because even if you weren't as great as you are, if you wanted to cut back and just be the bare minimum of a decent human being, you would still come out on top, despite the fact that you didn't actually earn that position. You come out on top because of what everyone else, what everyone else was doing that was negative. It's like being graded on the curve. Mm -hmm.
That's exactly what this is. You're being graded on a curve. And you are getting a high score because so many people are getting low scores. Right. You got so many people who are getting your zeros because they're not even showing up for the test. You got so many people that's getting your 25s, your 30% on the test because they didn't, even, they didn't even try. They didn't study for it. They didn't prepare for it. And now you're walking around with an 87, 97 thinking that you are an A student. No, you're not an A student. Right. You're a C student. But you get the you get the benefits of being an A student, not because you put in A level work, but because somebody else put in so much F level work that your C level work makes you look like an A. And you know and that's what I was trying to get people to understand. I looked at some of the commentary. I didn't I didn't go through it all because I knew that I wanted to vlog on this. So I, I really don't like to read a lot of commentary because I don't like to be persuaded. Um mm -hmm. But I did see some responses, and one of the things that I knew was going to happen when I first read it was that people were going to get hung up on the term violent. And so just automatically your paradigm shifts to, I ain't beating nobody. <laughs> I'm not, yep. I'm not that guy. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not whatever. Uh -huh. And which is why when I did my initial response to it, I was like, let's replace the term violent with, you know, any other of a half dozen other term you know words that are descriptive for poor behavior get i think that we can all agree that violence is probably the worst of the worst that you can be but mm -hmm. as i was sitting here listening to you i was reminded of someone i was having a conversation with actually someone that i'm related to um was having a conversation and was talking about how low self-esteem girls are very little effort and they are easy to get and so I, I was a low self-esteem girl and I'm very on the record as saying that I still struggle in a lot of ways from that. When you talk about someone who has daddy issues, which I have, and they are just a part of who I am, I've gotten better, but certain triggers, certain things that happen in my life put me back in that same six-year-old category and I have to work very hard to bring myself out of that. And so... You know, you have someone with, you know, daddy issues and then compound that with, you know, relationships that just did not work. You know, like I've, I've been very candid about my last relationship and about my marriage. And one of the things that I will say is one of the things that women do and we don't realize that we do this, you know, a lot of us are just open books and, you know, just like we just overshare. But really what we're doing is teaching someone how to treat you. So if I came to you and I said, you know, my last boyfriend was just, you know, an a-hole. He just took me through all kinds of this and the third. He didn't never remember my birthday. And he didn't never, mm -hmm. I didn't never get nothing for Christmas. You would have thought that it was Jehovah's Witnesses around here. I couldn't get no gifts. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't call me. He didn't text me. He didn't do nothing. We didn't have date night. So you start following all that information away because that literally is part of the get to know you, right? So somewhere in you, you're thinking, okay, well, this last dude didn't do this. I can send a text. So for someone who is wanting that and that's part of their validation system, you start doing that and you all of a sudden are three light years ahead of whatever the last yep. one was. Does that mean that you're giving your best effort though? And I think that that's your point. It's like, nah, mm -hmm. it's just like, okay, I, I sent a text, but you thought the 10th person that I didn't send a text to today. <laughs> you ain't really special. <laughs> yep. Oh, I appreciate that observation. Go ahead, sir. Mm. Right. So it's funny that you said that. That was something that I used to say. I don't say it so much now. I think it's because I'm married and I just don't really have those type of conversations anymore. But um, it was something that I used to say when I was when I was in my twenties a lot. Because you know, guys, we always have these conversations. And if you ever been on um Black Planet back in the day, then Man, he was having these wow. conversations then. <laughs> I took you back, didn't I? Uh huh. Uh, so what I used to say is, <laughs> so what I used to say is, um, see if I can remember it correctly. Um, if you pay attention, a woman will tell you everything she wants you to know, some of what she needs you to know, and none of what she doesn't want you to know. Mm -hmm. Um, and that third one is reserved for only people that she trusts mm -hmm. and that she uh, who earns a certain amount of trust from her all right because the thing is that people and that's as that's really just anybody all right but since we're talking about dating and uh romantic like relationships um the woman is going to keep things that she doesn't know that she can trust you with to herself 
but that first thing, everything that she wants you to know, if you're paying attention, you're going to know almost exactly what, how you need to treat her, what mm -hmm. she's expecting, what she wants, all right? Uh, the things, some of the things that she needs for you to know, these are the things that you need to either avoid or definitely do. Those are the deal breakers, all right? Uh, the things that she doesn't tell you, these are the things that you could use against her and that will severely hurt her. So you have to earn that trust. She has to have a level of faith that you will not use this information against her um, to hurt her or to try to control her, all right? And I don't know, I don't remember why uh, or even how I came up with that. I just know I just started saying it a lot and repeated and repeatedly, and it made sense. It still makes sense to me now. Um, but it goes to what you were saying that sometimes with uh, a woman who has a weakness of an Achilles heel, um, they will actually speak on that. So you know up front, you know, this is what I went through. All right, these are the issues that I have, and the and whether they say it directly or not, these are my triggers. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if you are a good, decent person, guy, man, dude, uh, again, however which way the woman interprets, interprets that, chances are these things are gonna be quite easy. Remembering birthdays, it's no effort on my part. I can tell you the date I started talking to my wife, the date that I asked her to, uh, uh, to be my woman, because I don't do girlfriends. Um, <laughs> I can tell you the dates that I, um, um, pro uh, pro proposed to her. I can tell you, obviously, the date that we got married. Um, so remembering dates and stuff ain't no thing to me. All right. So that's one thing that's easy to do. All right. Uh, remembering to get presents. A birthday, a, a time to celebrate is a time to do is a time to do presents. That's just common sense to me. There, there is no, there is no version of any relationship that I'm in that I could think of that there is something celebratory that happens either in your life or in our relationship that I'm not going to say, hey, I should do something special about it, you know? Now, let's, talk, let, let, let's compare a contrast, what that looks like from a normal uh, and why that could put you ahead, even though it's just normal and what it looks like going above and beyond, all right? So a normal thing is me going out, buy you some flowers, cards, chocolate, uh something that i know you like you know um it's normal it's expected but because you the woman have been in a uh in a relationship or even more than one relationship where this didn't happen then that's a little bit of a bigger deal mm -hmm. all right but now let's say in the same scenario your birthday comes up and i remember you talking about having this little this little uh bracelet that you got that you made from um, my Little Pony collection or something. I don't know. All right. And instead of just purchasing, purchasing you something, I go out and I remake that that uh, that necklace for you or bracelet for you. And, uh, mm -hmm. Get some My Little Ponies and braid the hair up and make it. I, whatever it was. All right. And I present to you something that you used to have from a kid that just made you happy. All we right. Love, man. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is extra. Right. That is showing that I'm paying attention to you, that I'm studying you, that I am uh, invested in you. Yes. Right? Yes. Those are two different things. So when you're able to just go out and, you know, get some flowers or whatever, you know, get a fruit basket, you know, I'm not saying it's not bad. That's good. Cool. Keep doing it. But understand, that is a C-level uh, attempt. All right? But when you do a C-level, when you give a C-level gift, all right, to a woman who's used to getting Fs or nothing at all or Ds, then your C is going to look like an A and you're going to be treated as though you gave her an A level gift. And that is what I was trying to get the fellas to see. Even if you're used to uh, functioning on an A level, cool, keep doing that. All right. Your wife, your woman will, will love you, you know, forever. All right. But understand that at any point of time, if you decide to cut back, or if you just um, do it unintentionally, when you um, when you just get a little bit too used to someone, all right, when you get a little bit too used, your bare minimum is still going to put you heads and shoulders above a lot of guys. And there are so many women who have 
experience these horrible relationships, all right, that makes your minimum A grade. Mm -hmm. we all want for fellas for the fellas to understand. This is not what, what the sister said, because the meme was was actually a, a, a screenshot of uh, a sister's Twitter, mm -hmm. right? So any fella that came across it or is coming across it now, I don't want you to take it as a personal attack, unless she is talking about you. Right. Because obviously she's talking about somebody. Right, right. These instances apply to someone. It's kind of like when women say, you know, so many women know all of these, um, all of these rapists, but not so many, but not too many men know right. any rapists. Yeah, I thought it, it was something like um, most women know a woman that's gotten raped, but men don't know mm -hmm. any rapists. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's like that. Dude, there are rapists out there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them. And chances are, you know one of them. Chances are, I know one of them. And it's not to say that you are it, but it's to say that this exists, this is a problem. And there may be some steps that you could take to help address these issues. And, and it could be them, just to, you know, kind of not give the men an out because I know that it can feel very, you know, accusatory and very antagonistic when people say things like that, like, dude, you know. It could be, you know, that the behavior is not as insidious as we think that it is. You know, that there are, I never will forget, like, what was that, the Adams family movie? And um, Wednesday, Adams showed up at a, at a Halloween party in her normal clothes. And so someone was like, uh, who are you supposed to be? And she said, I'm a homicidal maniac. They look like everybody else. So I always think about that because they don't necessarily come across looking the way that you think that they would look. I mean, obviously, if we saw someone with a, you know, a sign up that said, you know, I'm a jerk and I do the bare minimum. <laughs> it'd be very, it'd be very easy to recognize mm -hmm. those guys. And I also think that it's important to, you know, give clear context. Like there are categories, you know, I think that there are really good brothers who have they don't intentionally not step up. They really do think that they're giving, you know, effort in terms of what the woman wants. And I believe mm -hmm. that those relationships ultimately come to an impasse because, you know, you give someone half effort. You know, it's just like to your analogy, the C grade, which I've said all the time. If I struggle with math, which I do. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, I struggled with math. I had to work my butt off to get a B. There were kids that came, like, literally would get up that morning and do their homework and get A's. That mm -hmm. was not effort for them. That was like, it was effort nope. for me that was stayed in the house all weekend and <laughs> gave up parties and, you know, didn't go nowhere and couldn't be on the phone because I was busting my behind and I was sitting crying when I would get C's because I tried so hard and I couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, my subject is English. You give me English or literary anything or, you know, something that has to do with linguistics or anything that has to do with that. I'm like, yeah, I'm on it. I can write a paper. I can seriously write a paper in a day and know that I got that out the power. Site sources, formatting, APA, bring it, holla at your girl. That's my stuff. Like, that's my, that's my domain. So when I turn that stuff in mm -hmm. and I know that I get an A, but I'll trounce out and go to Starbucks where somebody else got to go to the tutoring lab or whatever, because they didn't format properly or, you know, they didn't cite their subjects or, or their sources or whatever the case may be. I can't feel, I can feel good about my effort yet. My, not my effort. I can feel good about my grade. Yes. But my effort mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily bring me any pleasure because there was none. Mm -hmm. It just, yep. I take it for granted. So I think that there are, you know, guys that, you know, go into a bucket of, they do the bare minimum because that's all they want to do. And they know that it gets them a certain place. And so therefore they can only deal with a certain kind of woman. And in those relationships, I think that you ultimately, like I was getting ready to say, come to an impasse because eventually she will, just like he will if the situation was reversed, get to the point where they're like, well, Bay, okay, so you do the same thing all the time. Like, do you think that you want to like kick it up a notch? Well, uh -huh. that's where people start to really think, oh, she ungrateful. She don't, yeah, I'm doing this, that, and the third. When you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you ain't really done nothing 
over the top like this is stuff that you've done in previous relationships and it's gotten you over and you know you yeah. like you haven't thought about growing beyond who it is that you are right now and so for you she just seems to be very ungrateful or vice versa um because you feel like you've gone to all this trouble and really you did a google search and you paid with a credit card and that's it that there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of effort right. and i don't right. want to confuse and ingratitude with um someone who's just like you know i would just really like it if you just put some more effort in it's, that's not ingratitude that's saying you're really taking it for granted that this is, you know, something mm -hmm. that I even want. Yeah. Oh, uh, taking it for granted. That was the phrase I was looking for. Um, gonna gonna go back just a little bit and talk about something that you said. Um, one of the one of the things that and I've heard a lot of guys. Okay, so I'm a gamer. I can, all right. I've heard other gamers, other male gamers say, well, you know, I could be out in the streets. I could be out in clubs. I'm here. I don't know why she's bothering me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the house. You know where I'm at. You know, I'm in the game. You know, I'm not bothering anyone. I'm not doing anything. And they will go to the extreme to prove that, hey, I am doing good. You should be grateful for the good that I'm doing because I could be doing worse. And there are other women who, who are putting up with far worse than what you're putting up with. So you should be grateful that I am here. You should be grateful that you know where I am and you don't have to wonder. You should, and when they go out on these tangents and when they make these comments, that shows that on some level, on some level, they understand, all right, that they have an advantage, okay? Because what they're doing in this instance is the bare minimum. If your significant other is looking for, is asking for uh, attention, um, often I would call it putting in a bid, all right? Putting in a bid for something, all right? The bid can be either accepted or no, actually, it could be it, it could be accepted, it could be um, rejected, or it could be postponed. Okay, mm -hmm. um, if your wife is putting in a bid, all right, or a significant other, and you are either rejecting it or postponing postponing it, understand that she's putting in that bid because she is not getting something that she wants. Therefore, she is asking for it. All right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, in this scenario, we're talking about attention. We're talking about time, quality time with each other, not just being in the house. All right. You understand on some level, whether a visceral level or whether a very conscious level, that you are not giving her attention, which is what she is looking for. But you're telling her that she should be settling for the fact that you are there simply because other women are dealing with the fact that their husbands, their men, their significant others are not there and, that's and not like aren't whole giving threat. them any kind of attention. <laughs> that's a whole threat. But so like, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. But, and it also shows that bare minute, it shows that you understand what it is that you're doing. You might not, you may not recognize it. You may not recognize it, but if you're one of those type of people that responds to your significant other this way, then you understand it on some level. And that is something that needs to be addressed. So, um, cause I want to, I want to wrap cause I don't want it to be too long. I'd love to bring you back and talk okay. about some more, but, um, give just two, 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 uh, sage advices. That's a terrible sentence structure, but we're going to go with it. Give uh, advice for the man that is, um, doing the bare minimum and you know, what will be the, 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 the necessary steps to kind of up his game or to elevate his mental and then give some advice to, you know, a, a, a woman out there that may be dealing with this and, you know, she's frustrated and doesn't really know how to articulate it or say, you know, to her guy, I appreciate you, but I need for you to go a little bit further. Ooh, you put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Man, that's, that sage like advice that that comes out organically. I don't know if I've ever been able to summon it before. <laughs> We're gonna I see what I can do. You. <laughs> All right. Okay. So in this case, I 
what I will do is I will talk about something more real. I will talk about myself, okay? There has been a time in my relationship with my wife. And I, and I say my wife because we only courted for one year. We were, we were married a year to the date that we started talking, all right? So when it comes to how long we've been together, we've been married for far longer than we've been uh, together unmarried, all right? So, wow, okay. So um, there has been a time or two when I was taking my wife for granted. And understand, this is coming from a guy who thought that I would never do that. I knew from a kid, I would always appreciate my wife. I would always show her this, this, that, and the other. I just, I just knew I was going to be that type of, that type of husband. Uh, but I wasn't. And my wife would talk to me about it. She, not really. So she would make comments about it. And I would miss the comments. You know, I'd hear it, but I'd miss it. It wouldn't hit me, all right? And it wasn't until things started to get bad that I actually started listening, all right? So how did I come back from that? I'm going to talk about that. And okay. this is what I would suggest uh, were a brother to ask me uh, my opinion on the matter. And I will also say I would suggest that you do this before it gets bad, all right? Before it gets to the point where you're uh, angry and she's angry and the anger is sitting in the house for an extended period of time, mm -hmm. okay? So what I did is first I listened to everything that she had to say, all right? I listened to what she had to say and I made it a point to not respond defensively. And for me, that means not res that meant not responding at all, just listening, all right, to take it in, all right? After I did that, I sat with what she was saying, all right? And it was for a couple of days. This, this was not uh, an overnight process by any stretch of the imagination, but I sat. Let me stop you and ask here, because okay. I'm wondering, so I'm sure somebody else is wondering, is that your typical way of processing and she understood that or did you say to her well babe can i just ponder for you know, okay bit? okay fair point uh, fair question um that is actually my um my normal way however i usually process things a lot faster all right uh, one of the things that my wife really likes about me is that i'm very very decisive and that and i'm able to stick with the decision and and run with it all right uh, but this is one of those things that I did not, uh, I was not, not that I wasn't decisive on, but I took my time because I wanted to make sure that I got it right because my wife is worth that extra time, right? So I did tell her, I, okay, let me sit with this. Let me think on this for however long I need to because I want to make sure that when we, pro when we progress, we actually progress and we don't regress, right? Mm -hmm. So I sat with it. And once that I felt like I was understanding what she was saying, I had another conversation with her. This time, kind of repeating to her everything that she said, but in my own words, to show that, okay, hey, is this really what I'm getting? Am I understanding this correct? Once I was able to verify, okay, yeah, that what, what I'm understanding is what she's saying, okay, now I recognize that there is a problem. Now I'm gonna take steps to deal with this problem and to hopefully get rid of it, all right? So I did some things that I never thought that I would actually have to do. And I don't have to do it anymore now because it's just, you know, I grew from that point. But for a time, I did some things that I didn't really think that I would ever have to do. I scheduled um, extra things to do for my wife. And I always thought that that should be organic, that that should be something that you, you, you do uh, out of spontaneity, just because you felt like doing it because you love your wife and so on and so forth. And to an extent, that is true. But when you're trying to recover, all right, and trying to make sure that you, I didn't lose her trust, but wanted to make sure that I earned the right to keep her trust, all right? Um, I took the time and I made out a schedule. I had alarms on my phone. Hey, uh, Make sure you get something, you know, because one of her, 
uh, love languages is uh, gift as uh, gifts. That's the gifts of service is one of it. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, boy, y'all gift lovers. Oh people misunderstand so, um, that. I'm gonna bring you back and we're gonna talk about it because people really I, what that means. <laughs> I bet, bet. So um, you know, so I, I will miss I, I will make a schedule um that would tell me, hey, remember to do this, remember to, th to do that, remember to do this, remember to do that. And um Sometimes if she says something and, I, and I'm hearing it, I will write it down. I will write it down in my phone to where it'll pop up again later and I can look at it and say, oh, okay, I remember this. Let me go ahead and do this. So at first it was just do things, do extra things. And then it was, okay, hey, this might be a good idea. Let me do this. This might be a good idea. One of the, one of the, one of the biggest things that, she, that I did for her that she loves is very, very simple. My wife, the, Michelle, Michelle's her name. Michelle does not like for her food to touch, all right? <laughs> so knowing this, okay, uh, I was like, there's gotta be something, cause she's not the only goofy person like this. So okay, there's gotta be all, something. We're not goofy. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I knew you was like that. <laughs> so like, it's gotta be something. Um, that caters to people because she's not the only person like that. I've I've heard this before, right? Mm -hmm. So I went on. I was like food separator or something like that, and these little plastic rubberish things popped up, and I went on uh, Amazon and I got them. All right, and basically it separates your food, so and it keeps it to where you know if you have uh, a food that has some type of liquid in it or anything like that, it won't drain into the other food. All I right? need that. Can you run that to me, please? I got you, sis. I got you. All right. She <laughs> loves it. And the, the biggest part that she loves about it is because it is something extremely unique to her. All right. It touches on something that is important to her that affects her and her only as far as like in this household. All right. So getting to a point where I tailored my gifts to her showed her two things one every time i was able to give her something shows her that i was thinking of her yeah. and that's and that is what i had to get to understand that people who like those gifts don't so much like the gift itself they like the fact that it signifies it's it's, it's proof that they were thinking of you it's the thoughtfulness yeah. and i tell people that all the time and you know not to segue you know or, or mm -hmm. divert mm -hmm. but you know the problem with gift giving or the, the having gifts as a love language is to the casual observer, it feels very superficial and materialistic. And, you know, obviously I like my stuff, but mm -hmm. that's why I get up and go to job. I can buy my own stuff. Like I ain't asking nobody to do that. But, you know, for those of us who have gifts as either a primary language or it is one of our language, it's the thoughtfulness. We just like to know that you know us just by observation, just by conversation, being away, uh, around us. And one of the things that you'll find about someone who has gifts as a language, we do that for other people. Like we will figure out like, oh, they really need this, that, and the third because we are masters mm -hmm. of observation. That is uh -huh. really one of the fundamental ways that we show love because we are like, I get so excited when I give people stuff. I'm like, I'm like a kid. I'm just as happy to give it to them as I am for them to receive it. It's because the same way. it's a lot of love that goes into that. It's a lot of care and concern. So for us, it's not even like I told some um, one guy that I was talking to. I was like, you know, if you if your only tool or resource is to go to the mall to get me something, you don't know me at all. Like not at all. What I genuinely crave ain't at Nordstrom's. I mean, I'm sure I could find something, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really there. That's not really what I want. Mm -hmm. And I, what I love about what you just said was you know, sitting and pondering, not reacting, because it's hard to hear, baby, you're not really meeting my needs, because really that's what it boils down to it. No matter yep. how we try and yep. couch it and how we try mm -hmm. and you know, do the sandwich, um, you know, build up theory and, you know, to talk about something that is very serious, we're saying, you know, my needs are not really being met here. And mm -hmm. I would like it very much if, you know, we could do something about that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I remember talking to my last guy and, you know, telling him, cause you know, I'm a big proponent. I'm, I'm not a, um, 
a clingy person by nature, but I will always mm -hmm. be like, you know, I need my FaceTime. Like I need date night. I need like, when was the last time we went out? And I will never forget that the last time I told him that he looked me in my face and said, why should I take you out and spend money when you can cook? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> while that may have been valid because I'm sure that he appreciated a home cooked meal. You know, he was a bigger brother, so you know he he liked a home cooked meal. I'm not the twirl in the kitchen type. If he had told me, you know, babe, I really, you know, can you cook so and so and so, which he had done before, absolutely, I can make you whatever. Let's you know, let's cook, let's whatever. But if I'm telling you that I'm, I need this 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 thing, whatever it is, and it wasn't even about the money spent it wasn't about that it was about the reconnection it was about you know come you know going out i want to put on heels and i want to look pretty and i want to you know whatever like in my job I, I can run the world i don't want to i want to go out and i want to be weak and i want to be pretty <laughs> i want to put on heels and i want you to tell me that my my toes are cute and <laughs> that's it like i don't want nothing else and we can go and do that at at steak and shake or whatever it is the point was is that we were together and you know we could mm -hmm. go out and we could enjoy this meal and break bread, bread together and whatever. So he totally missed the point of that. I was very offended by his response. And you know, quite frankly, we didn't recover, obviously. Not because of mm -hmm. that, but because of some other things. But I never forgot right, that. Right. So, you know, your I think that it's important, your point is that if someone comes to you and tells you that they are lacking something in the relationship, it's not an indictment on who you are or a referendum on your ability to satisfy them it's them really being mature and articulating that there's a need that's not being met and i think that we have to get to the point where we're having mature conversations and mature relationships and being mm -hmm. able to say okay you know what um that hurts because i thought i was it I thought I was doing everything. Yeah, I thought I was, I thought I was killing it, you know? I thought I was doing it, but I guess I'm mm -hmm. So let me go, go and find mm -hmm. her what it is that yeah. you're talking about instead of getting real defensive because it, it is, you know, human nature for our, our egos to be a tad bit bruised because, you know, we think we bring in our A game, especially when we love someone. So I mm -hmm. love the fact that you just, you know, you ask for some time and said, let me think about this. And then really through observation, not saying, well, what is it that you want, girl? Like I'm doing this, that and I'm going on and I bring home a paycheck. I, I'm not providing. Don't you see some lights on around here? You ain't <laughs> setting up You ain't say thank you about that. You ain't say thank you about that. <laughs> I see that you turned on the air. It's hot down here. <laughs> so, you know, being able to go back and say, all right, my the love of my life appreciates X, Y, and Z. Let me do this for, for her. And really, it sounds like it was really some small things that just needed to be tweaked that got you some really mm -hmm. big returns on your investment. Yeah. Like you didn't have to do a whole heck of a lot because I know that you know you're a good brother and a good husband and you desired mm -hmm. to step up and do those things for her. But it showed her, my baby really thinking about me. My baby really knows me. He's paying attention to me. He sees where mm -hmm. these things would bring just a little bit of joy in my day. And that's something that he's wanting to do. And I think hats off and kudos to you. So the last question or last piece of advice was to the ladies. How would you? To the ladies. Yes. Right. How, right. how do we tell, you know, our significant others, you know, baby, you out here benefiting from violent men. I'm just playing. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So but before I go on to the ladies, I wanted to finish up with the guys real quick. Okay. And basically, and basically, I'm at the end. Basically, I grew from there, all right? I gave myself something to start with, and then I allowed myself to evolve from there, all right? So I don't have any uh, alarms right now. And every once in a while, I, I, I'll say something because I want to do something later, all right? But I started making sure that I remember to do those small things because they have big returns. And because the, what, what is small to me but it's not to her, Absolutely. all right? Mm -hmm. And making that connection that what I'm doing is not a small thing. It's, not, it's actually not a small thing. It's a big thing, but it's a small action, all right? 
and differ differentiating those two and, and connecting that. It took me a while. And I did not get it right 100% of the time. All right. Sometimes I, I came back and I had to, you know, step back up again. Uh, it, took, it was a process, but it's worth it. M making your woman smile just for the sake of seeing her smile, to me, it's worth it. All right. So make your woman smile. That's what I'll say for the fellas. Okay. And try to try to get her to do that as often as possible. All right. For the ladies. Okay, so sisters, it can be very difficult to get through to a man and to break through his ego, especially when he doesn't realize that it is affecting the way that he uh, receives what it is that you're telling him. The part that I said that I had to sit with it for a while, a large portion of that was me fighting my own ego about, because uh, I thought I was a shit. I, I thought I was a fucking awesome husband, all right? <laughs> and I, I, I think I had some good reasons, you know, why while other women were talking about, they man, don't cook, they man, don't clean with shit. I cook, I clean, you know. Um, and I do a damn good job. And my mom would tell you, matter of fact, one of the things my mom told my wife when we got married is don't let him tell you that he doesn't know how to clean. He knows how to clean. I was trained very well. So, you know, I thought I was awesome, you know, and I was, but there was something that I was lacking in. All right. Mm -hmm. So the difficult thing, the, the, the largest piece was, uh, subjugating my own ego so that I could really connect with what it is that she was telling me. So for you, ladies, um, it's easy for me to say, figure out a way around this ego. I'm not saying it because it's easy to do. I'm saying it because it is the most effective way to get the improvement that you're looking for. Now, I don't know how you do that because every guy, believe it or not, we're different, all right? You know, we have different triggers, different different things that causes us to, to defend ourselves, even when we're not actually being attacked, all right? Um, that is a very individual uh, thing. But however which way, if you got to talk to his mom, talk to his sisters, his brother, whatever information that you need to utilize in order to get through to him, if it's worth it, do it. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that I could suggest is you write it out, give it to him, letter, email, whatever. This allows him to read it in his own voice. It allows him to read everything that you want to say without him interrupting what you're saying and without him um, incidentally or unintentionally uh, taking the conversation left or right when all you just wanted to be was direct, all right? That's one of the techniques that you can use. There are others. What they are or whether it would be effective or not is solely dependent on your significant other. And I cannot speak on that without talking a whole lot. Once you get to that point, uh, allow him no time. And, and if you are an impatient person, this is going to bother you. Allow him the time to adjust to that information. All right. <laughs> Allow him that time. It may take longer than you think it's, it should take. That's OK. But you're playing a long game here. You're not trying to fix everything up front so you can enjoy perfection for the rest of your life. It's not going to be like that. You know this already. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. I'm just reminding you. All right. This is a long game. And last but not least, whether you like it or not, you still got to give them room to, to, to mess up some. It's going to happen, all right? Not to give him space to be lazy, but give him enough room to make a mistake, to forget something, and not have to take him to the guillotine for it, all right? Because it's not going to make anything better. You're still playing the long game. He's still playing the long game. You guys are playing the long game together, all right? So... Basically, forming a deeper, deeper connection um, is more or less one of the biggest parts of this. If you can get past his ego, everything else is doable. 
that ego can be a mother, especially when we think we don't have one. Because for the longest time, I did not think that I had one wow. because I was so open-minded, you know? I didn't think that I had room to have an ego. I learned that lesson the hard way, okay? So, it's a, it's, it's, it's a 10K. It's not a sprint, mm -hmm. all right? Um, get past that ego, all right? Don't insult it, because you, all you're gonna do is just make everything worse. Right. Uh, but get past the ego. That is the main thing that I can say. Get past the ego and give him time to actually recover and understand and relate to what's going on. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry and it's going to be justifiable. But he's not going to understand the justification until he understands that he is in his own way. Mm -hmm. That is what I have to say. That's amazing. That's amazing advice. And we're going to end on that note. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had an absolute ball. I'm so glad that we could do this. And I'm so looking forward to more time to chat with you. Oh, for sure, man. We got to do this again. I'm so Definitely serious. We got to do it again. Yes, ma'am. All, right. All right. Well, I will let you go. Let me pause okay. the recording. And I will invite everyone to, um, to view this and leave your feedback. Uh, for Brother Skinner or for myself down below. Um, leave your commentary. We would love to hear what your thoughts are. Some of the advice that he gave, I think, is sage and sound and may help you in your relationship. Um, simply Felisa, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.